in again and uh, we'll be doing our matins. This is our fifth midweek matins and uh, our last one because next week will be Holy Week. So we won't have a Wednesday service. We'll have Thursday, Friday next week. Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. So we're on page 219 of the Lutheran Service Book, Order of Matins. And um, if if you don't have a Lutheran service book at home, you can go to our website and go to click on the current events tab, and uh, that starts with the Sunday worship service, and then announcements from the bulletin, and then and then it has the words for matins, or for service we're using today below that. So I invite you to stand. Oh Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. seasonal antiphone, but your response is the same here printed. O come, let us worship him. The Lord has redeemed his people. O come, let us worship him. And we continue right away with the Venite. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful Your precepts and 
fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we'll turn to him. 421, Jesus grant that balm and healing. So, uh, um, mostly Mark 14 for this week, but uh, any, any of the weeks, any of the days particularly get your attention? The, uh, 
the first day was uh, Jesus praying, Mark 14, 32 to 36. And they were went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remember, remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And uh, uh, sometimes as Christians we think, well, we shouldn't be afraid of death, right? Uh, well, we shouldn't fear death as much as people who don't believe. But here Jesus is even asking that the, if the Father could change the plan, uh, change his will, that, uh, that he would take this from him. Even Jesus is having... <laughs> Some trepidation, some fear, as he he's knows that he's, uh, he's so close now that it's about to begin the trial, the or the the uh, well, the um, betrayal first, and then the trial, the beating, and then the death. Um, he really it really does show his humanness, doesn't it? And hopefully, it can give us a little comfort if we're still a little bit afraid, even of the pain of death or. Uh, um, if Jesus, Jesus asked the Father that He wouldn't have to go through this, uh, we can we can pray that that it be a little easier for us too. Uh, so, question: What would you miss the most if the story of Gethsemane was not in the Bible? I think I think we we really get a picture of. Jesus' humanness here, uh, so, uh, more than you know anywhere else, that he is actually asking the Father, you know, if it's possible to to take this away, to uh, to change the plan. Is there, is there another way? Plan B, Plan C, uh, some other way to get away from this, and to, and also. We see the humanness of the disciples too, sleeping, and you know they had been so they had been so uh, sure of themselves and so eager to defend Jesus and to go with him even unto death, and and yet as soon as it, it's a little dark out, as soon as things quiet down, they can't even keep their eyes open. Uh, they're so tired. So. Um, <coughs> Maybe this can be a story, if you are maybe near your own death, to help remind you, to encourage you. We, we, uh, we do put it in the Father's hand, even our own lives, and say, and we, and we pray, Lord, we pray that you would take our sins, our, our diseases, our pains away, but your will, be done, Lord, your will. And then immediately after that is the kiss. kiss it, the from the devil? Yeah, what a what a horrible way to betray someone with a kiss, right? Uh, the first question is, tell about a kiss you remember. I, <laughs> some of them, are, yeah, those are some intimate moments, aren't they? Especially in American culture, we don't go around giving people kisses like you know, so, you know some other cultures. You know, just a welcome, friendly welcome. Um, yeah. Even in the New Testament says, "Greet each other with a, a with a kiss." Of, uh, but uh, we reserve our kisses for our our wives, right? Our spouses. So. Um, that would be a very painful betrayal, wouldn't it? Mm. A kiss of betrayal. Maybe if if you were going through a difficult time with your wife, 
uh, or, or husband, if they've been cheating on you and yet we're still coming home and giving you a kiss, maybe you could understand a little bit how Jesus felt at that moment, but at least Jesus knew what was going on. At least Jesus knew that, uh, that Judas, I mean, he had, he had even called Judas out earlier at the supper table. An ordinary guy, the young man who had been following them wearing uh, linen cloth, uh, and um, yes, it is interesting to think, what if this was Mark himself, who then, who later was the, the author who wrote this, the gospel, probably sat down with Peter and, and, and wrote down what Peter said, Peter's words of telling this story. Uh, what if this was Mark himself? Mark is the only person who tells this little story. Uh, most people, if they were writing this, might leave that out, right? <laughs> well, this was the time I ran away naked. <laughs> uh, this would be one of those embarrassing moments that you don't want to talk about. Um, <laughs> but he includes it. You know, uh, not, not obviously. It wouldn't be a prideful you know, day, moment. This isn't the time I streaked through the whole town of Jerusalem, but uh, Mark, I, I was there. I was there. I also ran away. Uh, they tried to grab me, but I ran away. Um, and yet Jesus, you know, uh, a, a, Jesus, a reminder, you know, maybe for Mark, that uh, even though he too ran away, even though he too betrayed Jesus, that, uh, that Jesus still forgave him. And Jesus allowed him to be an important part of, of the this mission of, of spreading the good news with Paul and Barnabas and, uh, and um, r maybe with Peter writing out you know, the story of Jesus' life. The, uh, the gospel, he gets to include a little bit in, in himself. And, um, and as the story re reminds us a little bit, how do you get dressed? You hear a bump in the night, some noise outside. You usually don't spend the time to get fully dressed, right? So maybe, uh, I, I, I hadn't even thought, heard the story before, the, the theory that maybe they were even at Mark's house having that last supper and, and then Mark was getting you know, settled in for the night, you know, relaxed, not planning on going out again. Of course, they wouldn't plan on going out after the Passover meal. Uh, and then all of a sudden he saw the whole group of them going out and thought, oh, I wonder where they're going. Better grab, you know, I don't have time to get fully dressed. I'll just grab a sheet and follow them and see what's going on. So, um, Makes that, makes that part of the story a little more personal with Mark, doesn't it? Maybe someday we'll get to sit down with him and ask him about that. And, uh, and then the, well, each, one, each one of the days is so thought-provoking in this, in this section of Jesus' trial, but um, the confession of love that was from Saturday. They led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and scribes came together seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. And so again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. Later he tells Pilate, you know, when Pilate asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? He said, You have said so. Uh, and I, I meant to look at the other gospel writers to see how they, how, how, how they recorded Jesus' uh, answer to the high priest. But uh, I am, yes, I am the Christ. I am the Son of the Blessed One. Uh, and some people claim that Jesus never claimed to be divine. Well, it seems pretty clear. He answered pretty straight here, even in our modern English. Yes, I am the Son of the Blessed One. Uh, and you will see 
the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And they all condemned him as deserving death. Uh, death, well, the charge is blasphemy, claiming to be God. That's the charge. So anyone who says that Jesus never claimed to be God doesn't is, is refusing to understand what Jesus himself said. He was only the perfect Son of God to take away our sins, pay the price, take our punishment on himself, defeat death, defeat Satan, and rise again. And we like to think we can defeat Satan ourselves. Uh, there's that famous song about the fiddler, right? Devil went down to Georgia. We like to think we could do it ourselves. Uh, we, we've been watching uh, Highway to Heaven you know, with Michael Landon, who uh, was the Pa Ingalls uh, in uh, the Little House on the Prairie series, and then after that he made this Highway to Heaven series, and one of the episodes where they had, were tricking the devil. Uh, they made one of them made a deal with the devil, and so they were they were going to trick him, and it's um, they they take a little bit of liberty with the theology, and <laughs> even in the show Highway to Heaven, it's a little bit more uh, cultural theology than biblical theology, but uh, we like to think that. We could outsmart even Satan, but but only Jesus, only the Son of God, can has that power and has already done that Himself uh, through uh, the whole life, the perfect life, the horrible sufferings that we're reading about here, and and uh, and then showing His victory by His resurrection. He's the Trojan horse. Um, there's a famous myth about the, hor the, the, the Trojan horse. And they, they say, well, we, we can't, you're right, they, they were, had been sieging the town, and they said, well, we can't defeat you, so we'll give you this gift. We made this horse for you. And uh, they brought the horse into the town, and then there were people hiding in the horse that came out at night and, and opened the gates and... and uh, defeated the city so um, but Jesus is is even better Trojan horse story the devil thought he had won when he had the Son of God dying on a cross the devil is kind of like us he thinks that he could defeat Jesus, God himself he could trick God but uh, even still, now that he's defeated, he still refuses to, to uh, acknowledge that he's already lost. Still fighting to try to get a little something. So, but we have the power of God on our side. So, ah, uh, that's... Any other thoughts or questions? I'll, uh, we'll end there for now, and uh, probably Sunday will be the focusing on more of the passion story. So maybe uh, this will help help us think through that, you know, as we get into Sunday and next the rest of next week too. Also, so we will then turn back to the worship service uh, matins. On page 223 is the Te Deum, and um, this is a little bit challenging on the piano because that uh, verse 5 and 6 are a different key, different flats, so you might pause for just a half a second to remind yourself of the different key change there on the piano, and I invite the rest of you to stand as we as we sing the today of together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the call out for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Our closing hymn for today, then, it was 431, Not All the Blood of Beasts. And we'll extinguish the candles as we sing our closing hymn. Tree.